Africa, I'm Bonnie Moody. Happy Monday and welcome to Afternoon Express. It's, of course, a brand new week in the loft. And March is a big month for South African film. And today we're taking a look at two exciting new local productions. The first is an action comedy, Safe Bet, which released in cinemas this past Friday. We'll be chatting to the lead cast member, Wandile Mulebati. And then we'll be taking a look at a new Afrikaans drama called Sync, which releases this coming weekend. Two of the lead cast members, Amalia Ace, who you, you might recognize from Sieben Delan, and Shoki Mukhapa are both in our loft today. Somebody else who's cooking up a storm in the kitchen is Danilo. Yes, good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. It's always so cool to come and join you guys on a brand new week right here on the show. Hope your weekend was absolutely fantastic. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Those who do know me know that I absolutely love all things food when it comes to trying out new restaurants. And recently I've been exploring quite a lot of the front shook route, and we've come across this restaurant called Ryan's Kitchen, who we love so, so much. And so what we've done is we've invited the head chef along into our studio today. His name is Ryan Smith, and he's our chef for today. So Ryan, come and join us over here. Thank uh, you. We're making something so delicious, I know. Uh -huh. We were meant to cook with mussels today. Uh, no, no, not available today. But apparently it's red tide. Uh -huh, that's right. Uh, what there's does an, that mean? Uh, basically an overgrowth of LV, algae on the coastline uh -huh. that kills the oxygen in the water and uh, starts releasing toxins. So basically anything uh -huh. growing on rocks on the coastline is potentially poison. So okay. It's happened at the moment. But that's not the end of the game. No, not at all. Not at all. With trout. We've, yeah, we're doing trout, which is ironically how we first started uh. doing this dish. We've moved on to mussels with it, but basically we're making a rendition of a Cape Malay pickle fish, but very modern. It's sort of the philosophy of our restaurant is bringing a traditional possible Cape food. Uh, to the modern dino, dining table with some ingenuity and imagination, Ooh. maybe is way of putting it. And uh, using all the local spices and so on, you know, it's a very exciting dish, quite straightforward to make at home. And uh, yet it's got quite a big wow factor if you were to do it at home as a, as a home cook. You'll notice he's using a lot of uh, very ambiguous words here. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you the reason why is because this dish is so cool to make. You guys are going to love cooking along with us on the show today because there's some skills and they're going to make your friends think that you're absolutely amazing. So make sure you go and find this recipe on our website after an express.co.za you can also download the shopping list from us over there and get cooking along with us right here on afternoon express in the meantime though bonnie's on the couch with our first guest thank you well known as an actor as well as tv presenter in his younger days having starred in numerous local tv productions and films including a million colors in 2010 he is also a workhorse behind the camera and has co-founded a production company called coal stove productions joining us in the loft is wandile mulebatsi welcome to the loft Wendy. hey what's up it's great to be here yeah lovely. man lovely to see you yeah. so you started in this industry on television at a very young age do you yeah. remember your first production your first job I actually do. Um, it was a film called Born Free. I uh, was in that. Yes, I was in that. Man. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I remember shooting out in the Shumba Lodge, and yeah, that was yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was my first one. It was a great experience. Yeah. And when did you know that this you wanted this to be a lifelong career? I think my mother knew before I did. I was sort of chacharak mm. you know, like mm. running around breaking things. <laughs> my mother was like, "Okay, let's direct this energy somewhere," and she just took me to an agent and. Uh, it sort of grew on me. I started yeah, loving the performance yeah, and yeah. from there just took it with life's own life. Wow. Not only are you absolutely magical on screen, but you've also oh, got you. muscle for behind the scenes. And in South Africa, that takes some strong muscle because making films in this country is still, is still hard work. Yeah, it is. Um, but, you know, it's, it's exciting now because things are changing. You know, I mean, you have films yeah. like Safe Bet, um, you have films like Hear Me Move, um, tell me sweet something, you got happiness. There's a hard to get. There's like a slate of like, films that are coming out that are really starting to encourage young filmmakers to go out there and make stuff, which is so exciting. What characteristics does a filmmaker have to have in order to reach that final finish line of actually seeing their film materialize Oy. on screen? Um, I think it's two things really. It's, it's a thick skin and incredible belief in your story. You have yeah. to have the ability to hear no a lot um, yeah. and not to be discouraged by no, you know. No mm -hmm. is not always a bad thing. Uh, my business partner, Fidel, always says that, you know, say, someone saying no means that you just go to someone else. Wow. And just close that door and just go to the next opportunity, yeah. you know. And just have to get a, uh, an appetite for the no's and just move on and right. also love your story. Like, if you're not really passionate about it, then don't make it. Mm, if, it doesn't, mm. if it doesn't wake you up in the middle of the night, like, oh, I think on page five we should actually have a cut to the outside, you know, then, then yeah, don't make the film. Yeah, yeah. Don't make the film. And you also have to keep telling yourself that what's the worst that could happen? They could say no. Exactly. And that's it. It doesn't and get any worse than that. Once they say no, you just go to someone else. You're not going to get at the stake. Exactly. And then 100%. I saw you in that incredible film, A Million Colors. You were absolutely breathtaking. What Thanks, was that Sansa. experience like? It was 
It was, it was an incredible film to make, you know, because I think for me, films that talk about our country and where we've come from as a nation really get my, my ambers boiling, you know, and, yeah. and I, I love making films like that because it resonates about the Mandela miracle, but also about the country right now. Um, and A Million Colors was incredible. I mean, I met my it wife, was. Jessica, on that set. Yes, um, I'm going to ask you about that. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. But yeah, it's just, it's, it, was a, it was the first film that I did where I was the lead and where I had to really anchor myself in the director's vision and go with him on that journey. And it was a, you know, Muntun Dabella was an incredible character mm. in his real life. Mm. And to make mm. that come to the screen was incredible privilege and I'm glad that I did it. And I mean, it's, it's such a big story and the, the lead role is quite pivotal to that story because he was mm. such a tenacious man yeah. with such a, so goal driven. Yes. What are some of the things that you learned on that journey? I think what, it's, it sounds a little corny when I say it, but it's, it's the, the ability of the human spirit, you know. It's, it's, it's sometimes yes. daunting to, to hear what people go through and they still wake up every day and say, you know what, it's fine, tomorrow's going to be better. Like Muntu went through incredible hardships and every single day he just kept telling himself that I need to move forward yeah. because if he stopped, he would, his life would have ended. Yeah. And that, that, that drive is something that I find so incredible. You know? And not only did he go through incredible hardships, he loved one woman all his life. Exactly. And you met the woman you love uh -oh. on the set. Yes, I did. Her name is Jessica, right? Jessica, yeah. Tell me all about it. Was Eesh. it action at first sight? It was, it was, <laughs> it was a bit like um, I saw her. She was actually ironing my costume. Mm. She was a, she's, a, she's a designer, so she was doing... <clears throat> did she still iron your costume? <laughs> <laughs> so teasing. she was in the, and then? in the costume department, you know, and I saw her. Um, I don't know what happened. I must, I must be honest. Like, the whole love at first sight thing was kind of how it played out. Yeah. And I was, yeah. like, fighting because I was like, don't be cheesy. Don't be cheesy. Don't fall in yeah. love on a set. Like, come on, be cool. And it just it wasn't there. I just fell head over heels of her, and I just fell in love. And we got wow. married. How years long years. after that were you married? So, I think 2010, we got married in 2013. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So, what has been the highlight of your um, off-screen career, your producing career, and your on-screen career, respectively? I think the highlight has really been working with directors that are passionate about their projects. Um, like on Safe Bed, you know, working with Mr. B, there, there's a drive that he has. And when he walks into a room, literally, like, it's, it's very hard to explain. Like, he comes in there and he gives you confidence. And, dire and directors that do that always draw people towards them, draw financiers, talent towards wow. them, distributors, everyone wow. moves towards them. And, that, and Safe Bed for me has been incredible. Yeah. Just working with someone with such a clear vision, and such a drive. Yeah. Um, and I think behind the scenes, um, with Coastal, just Hear Me Move, you know, releasing that um, was just an incredible process because it took so long to make that when we finally got it to the distributor, we're like, here it is, put on the cinema. Yeah. It was an incredible feeling. Yeah. It was just amazing. I mean, your journey hasn't been without its challenges yeah. and you've had near-death experiences when yeah. you had an accident a couple mm. of years ago. Tell us about that experience. It was, it was probably one of the, the hardest things, I think, for my family and for me. Mm. Because, you know, it's, 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 it's something quite surreal when you think of a mother bearing their child. You know, it's usually sure. the other way around, you know? And I, yeah. think, and I think when I reflect on it now, um, it sort of uh, reminds me that I should never put my parents through that again. You know, that, that, wow. that feeling of sitting in the ICU and not knowing whether the what son's happened? gonna pull I mean... So it was late at night. Um, I'd come back from a really long edit and I drove into a tree. Um, oh and gosh. whether it's luck or what, but I literally drove into uh, a man's house called Hussein Kajikir, who actually is who's Earl Joseph's friend. And Earl Joseph and I have a band called Uju. And so I literally crashed in, I know, it's like, you know, the house that I hit, it, the, the tree that I hit was on a yard of someone who knew me. And one of the things that really shook me, actually, when I was getting checked out of ICU, they said that, you know, a lot of people pass away in their cars because people hear a loud bash outside and they're too scared to go they're outside. Too scared to come out. And so people bleed inside the car. And Hussein heard this bang and thankfully, thankfully, he came outside and saw that, no man, this is Earl's percussionist. Yeah. Let me call the ambulance. Because if he hadn't done that, like 40 minutes later, I probably would have passed away. Wow. Two things stand out for me in that story. The first is that I'm glad you're alive. Secondly, you're in a band. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you're in a band? Yes. Tell yes. us about that. Um, so it's a band, it's called Uju, mm -hmm. and I, I play percussion. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's one of those, you know, love things. It's just, I love wow, it, and it's just wow. one of those things that's just been always bubbling in my heart. Wow, there's obviously nothing you can't do. <laughs> well, I can't fly, not yet. No, <laughs> not but yet. Yeah, yeah. So it's well, been an incredible journey. You're not going away. We're going to chat to you about your film, Safe Bet, shortly. Awesome.
cool. After the break, we're making Easter-inspired mussels in a bag, and we're back on the couch with Wendy Lee to talk about his brand new action comedy, Safe Bet. Don't go away. Experience the world in a way less limited. Apply today at dinersclub.co.za. A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we're in the kitchen today and we're making something so delicious. It's a take on a Cape Malay curry and we're using trout instead of mussels today because of the red tide. Joining us in the studio today is uh, none other than Ryan. He's the head chef of Ryan's Kitchen in Franchuk. And it's such an honor to have him here today because we're trying something so different and it's so no, innovative. No, definitely. That's it's a very awesome. exciting dish. You know, probably, you know, a lot of Cape cuisine is maybe considered more, I don't know, stayed or quiet uh, or safe. Yeah. But we made something really exciting and we've turned it into, you know, Cape Malay fish is normally a, a cold dish. Yes. Normally you can do a salad and a piece of toast or something like that. We've turned it into a into a hot dish that could, it could become a, almost a one pot meal. Lovely. And, uh, no, it's fabulous. Well, it uses all the spices and if you love curry and pickles, you would love this dish, you know? Cool. Well, we um, really love it, so I'm ready to help you. I see you've kind of prepared everything else no, for us here so far. We've kind of got everything ready here. There's quite a few ingredients, but it's really straightforward. So obviously onion, garlic, ginger. Okay. We're going to turn that into a paste and then we've got some of the more traditional Malay spices there, ground up fennel, coriander seed, turmeric, uh, use some ground cumin there, bay leaves, curry leaves and then also I've got some hot curry powder madras. Oh, curry uh, leaves? Yeah, Is curry, curry leaf. leaf? It's a curry leaf becoming more and more oh, wow. readily available. It's a fantastic product. You know I just it, love it. You yeah, know what it smells like? It almost uh -huh. smells like um, sesame seeds, yeah, ground no. up sesame seeds. Oh, and it smells delicious. And then obviously we, we finish it, we've got some baby tomatoes and new potatoes. Okay. Key ingredient there is a tinned apricot jam. Okay. Uh, I suppose traditionally people sweeten the pickled fish with a little bit of sugar. Um, no, apricot jam is a bit of a grandmother yes. old yes. secret. And it can't be any apricot jam. You can't go and make a nice homemade one yourself. It's not <laughs> the same. Definitely it has not. to be all to gold or cube from a tin. <laughs> it's really bizarre. We have okay. a professional kitchen and it just is better with that. Yeah. You know, I don't know why. It's one and of those. And I'm sure everyone at home is pretty sitting to know how to get this thing started because they've got all this in front of them too. Let's just get okay. started with how. So when you can do this together. first, so let's get mm. the, the gas on first. And we're just going to start getting our pan hot. You can, you want to swap sides, but you can sure. grind this up for us then. So we're going to put the the garlic, the ginger, and the onions into the blender for us. So okay, you can go sure. ahead and just grind that up. And uh, and then we're just going to put some oil into our pot. Oh, I'm a messy kid. I'm no, a messy chef. Right. You're going to have to just deal no, with it. Don't even right. try and change my ways. <laughs> it is just what it is. Okay. No, that's how it, that's how it works. <laughs> There we go, and that can just get lobbed in there. So don't be scared to have a really good amount of this base. And we grind it up, this is probably the antithesis of French cooking, is grinding mushrooms into a, an, into a watery sort of paste. You know, yeah. it's just not done in French cooking. But for some reason, it just works better in a sort of curry environment. You, what you can do if it gets just a bit dry. There we go. There we go, that's the way now. Come on, dude, you can do it. Uh -huh. There we go, mm -hmm. there we go. And we're that's done. Basically. So you have this nice paste. And the reason that we do this is, uh, well, that's it. it, looks about right. So the reason we do this is because it's gonna give us a bullion some body afterwards. It's yes. not just gonna be a watery sort of mixture. You're gonna have some texture, because we're not gonna strain this. We're gonna Ooh. leave it as is. So that's basically the base. So our pot's getting a bit hot here. So let's just chuck in some, some oil here. Sunflower olive oil doesn't really matter for us. Okay, so well, don't olive's be scared. always better for you. Put a bit inside there. It's just getting hot here now. It must be Should be. Them. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. So we can just take the spatula and start to let's see how hot it is. Yeah, and the best, the best part about this, obviously, yeah. is you want to be starting to use a really nice yeah. cast iron pan no, uh, or for pot sure. that does Something with, that's retain not gonna, all that heat. Yeah. Um, admittedly, it's quite difficult to burn this in a mixture because it has got water volume, yes. so it'll always be ticking over nicely. But uh, an important part in missed out is to toast your spices before, especially the, the big ones like. Uh, um, you know, coriander seeds yeah. and fennel seeds, and so normally we use them whole. It makes whole, those flavors so, a lot more fragrant. Yeah, basically, so normally we toast them first and then we've ground them up. So we haven't shown you that, we've already done it, but we're ready to go. Well, instead of waiting for this to heat up, yeah. what we can actually do is just show the viewers what goes into where and how much, because all those yeah. ingredients and stuff are on the website. So mm -hmm. what usually happens? You've got to, the stuff that we've pureed and made the paste out of, yeah. we place that into our pot, we let that simmer for a bit. Basically, yeah, so we can go now. So the oil is kind of hot already. So we can, here. Yeah, once you get that sound, it's good to go. Cool. And that's the noise we want. So it's really quite straightforward from here. So we're just going to sweat it off for a, a minute or so. Oh, and this you see is such it's a nice trick. I like the trick that you've, you've blended it before. Yeah, no, so this is, yeah, it's a trick just to give I'll you a sort of, there we go, you can go for that. And give it a stir. Just for oh. a minute, you can see, you really get the big around the garlic and the ginger. Mm. Um, also something, like I said, you should, it's really good if you have a party at home and it's, it's all, it's got a big uh, visual appeal once you serve yes. it. And it's really so easy to do. Uh, important part is to actually do this the day or two in advance. Okay. to develop the flavor of the broth. Uh, you could cheat a bit, I suppose, and use a bit of a 
chicken stock powder or something yeah, like yeah. that will give it body instantly. Okay. Um, but if you're, if you're a bit cool. organized, do the day or two Well, just before. to speed it up for everyone at home, <coughs> let's just show us what other spices we need to throw in here. So, so we're going with that. Now we can actually start getting it inside now. So you're sweating okay. that off. We're going to sweat it all off. And just and by you the way, even if you do blend those mm -hmm. onions, they still burn your eyes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just to say. So we're just going to get that all in. And we've weighed it out. So cool. we don't have all to. All those are on the website. So don't worry about those details. And don't be scared of using spices. You know, you want big flavor afterwards. So, you know, so get some in there, basically. We've also got a few toasted cloves and allspice seeds there, which we also I just want to show everyone what it looks like once you guys mm -hmm. put it uh, all together. So you will see that all of those flavors come together mm -hmm. quite nicely. It's all that yellow um, coming together mm -hmm. nicely there. Cool. So we're going to let that cook off for a minute. Uh, and then obviously we've got some water, which we're going to use here, and we've got some vinegar. Mm. Uh, obviously, everyone has a different sort of Taste. Style of making so, yeah, it. Yeah. Some people like more pickle or more sweet or, or whatever. So um, that's something you can adjust after the fact. Okay. You know? So basically what we're going to do is from now on just add all of the wet ingredients to that. Make a nice broth out of yeah. it and then afterwards Very we'll show everyone how to combine all the ingredients basically together. Basically that's straightforward. Nice so thing. yeah, so what do we put on all the other stuff so far? Uh, awesome. So we can actually just top some water inside. Basically we you know we'd maybe cook it off a little bit longer but as we're on the show, Lovely. we need to get moving. We'll cool. just chuck some water inside there. And we'll basically show you guys how to do all of this at home um, afterwards. Uh, later on, we'll show you how to combine all the greens together so you can get the recipe on the shopping list from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. We're going to get this underway and we'll show you the rest of the steps in the next few minutes. So it's very exciting to watch. Bonnie's on standby. And then the bay leaves and some curry leaves. Safe Bet, a brand new and exciting action comedy starring Wandile Mulabati and Godfrey Tobejani, which centers around a bet gone wrong at a local <laughs> boxing match, has already scooped up a number of international awards and was released this past Friday at cinemas nationwide. We're back on the couch with Wandile Mulabati to tell us all about it. So, Safe Bet, how did that come about? Well, it was, um, I said it was actually me sort of conning Mr. Biva and Khan. Um, he started talking, telling me about this film that he was going to do, and I was like, Mr. B, I have to have that role. Okay, okay. so for it. those of us who don't know who Mr. B is, just, oh. and why is he called Mr. B? He sounds like a yeah, mysterious like character. Yeah. Um, Bongi Kang Kong mm. This is like a nickname we call okay. Mr. B, you know. So okay. he's the director, writer on right. the project, yeah. So you corner him I cornered him, I was like, unfolds. this script looks crazy, it looks great, I want a role. And he's like, ah, Wendy, you're too short, you're too ugly. And I was like, no, dude, <laughs> not, dude, I'm getting this role. And uh, I went through and I read for it and, yeah, the rest is oh, history. Oh, wow, that's a great lesson as well in how directors kind of envision what an actor should look yeah, like until exactly. they see you perform. Has that happened to you before when you audition for roles? A lot. Yeah, yeah it happens a lot, you know, and it, it, it's, it's really about uh, bringing something different to a character. And hopefully yes. the director wants that element, which is always exciting because mm -hmm. Mr. B was very happy to collaborate and experiment. Yes. And I was lucky to have Godfrey and the two leads. You know, you can bounce off of them. You can yeah. throw stuff at them and they can take it and work with it, you know. Some amazing, amazing actors there, yeah. yeah. Tell us about your character and how did you prepare, prepare for it? Well, uh, I play the role of Frank. Um, and I actually haven't told people this, but I used my older brother, Lebukhang, as a... As, as a muse? As the muse. Because wow. um, Frank is like a very responsible son, you know, takes care of the family. And Lebukhang is in that way every... He, never is he the good son? He's a good son. You yeah. know, he's a good son. The rest of us are just like nonsense. <laughs> and then Lebukhang is like very responsible. He's an accountant. Mm -hmm. He's a CA, a stand -lib. He works very hard. Wow. We all love him, you know? Yeah. And Frank... That's really who Frank is. He's very caring and nurtures his father and his mother. And that's, I loved using Lebhang as a, as, a, as a source for the character because it was so close and I could just get all kinds of nice mannerisms from him and wow, it was really cool. Wow. Any interesting, funny occurrences on set while filming? That's there must funny. have been numerous when you were yeah, involved. There, there were a couple. Um, there's a scene where uh, me and Godfrey, uh, Kaya's character, we go and we try and rob um, Lutuli's. Um, betting shop and in the actual take we go there and we like hold it up and like the the mag fell out and everyone started cracking on set and actually literally kept it i mean mr b kept it in this oh, he which kept is really it cool. in yeah, wow really cool. and so boxing i heard boxing mentioned was yeah. there any training involved did you have to learn how Luckily, to box we don't have to box uh -huh. Whew, so we just we just place a bet on a boxing match that goes yes. terribly wrong and yeah. we lose all our money yeah yeah wow too bad too and bad. what can audiences expect from this film why you know, should they go see it? They should go see it because it's like it's a great Friday night movie, you know? It's a movie that you can go out and watch with the family and the kids and just laugh and have a good night out. Um, I think it's so exciting, like I was saying earlier, that there's a lot of films coming out that are in that vein, you know, that are 
just celebrating South African life. Yeah. You know, and people yeah. can just laugh at ourselves. We can poke fun at, at our lives sometimes and just have a good night out, right. which is so exciting. And the film's obviously gotten a lot of international attention. Yeah. What has the world's reaction been to it? And what was most surprising for you? I think... For me, the, the biggest concern I have as an actor is that comedy. You know, comedy, the, you can miss it because it's yeah, so slight. Yeah, the timing you know? is so specific, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. you know? And the way Mr. B wrote it, the comedy actually tra travels. It travels and people laugh in the right places. Oh. Like, me and Latulu watch the premiere like this, you know? <laughs> and, like, everyone laughs in the right place. So we're like, okay, whew, they laughed at that one. Oh, they laughed at that one too. Wow. Oh, and they laughed at that one. Wow. And so that's one thing that I yeah. know people really are going to enjoy. The fact well, that the comedy works and they, they're going to have a good time. Yeah. Latulu is one of my favorite actors. Yeah. What was it like working with him? It was, it was daunting because um, I think Latulu's personality is so big. And you're sort of worried about how you should play next to him on the camera. Right. And then you realize that actually, Bob Lutuli is actually just out there trying to make the scene great, yeah. you know? And it's so yeah. cool to yeah. work with someone like that because there's no airs, there's no concern. Like, he's there joking with you and he lets you throw things at him and he takes it and throws stuff back at you. And it's a lot of fun. You know, yeah. It was great. It was yeah. great working with him. Yeah. And what are you cooking up? When are you casting me in one of your films? Ah, funny. Don't I even, mean, you know? Obs. I'm going to I'm going to be calling you because um, actually we are working on a on a on a TV series at the moment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and a film called Bring Back Lost Lover, oh, which wow. um, yeah you actually yeah yeah <clears throat> let's talk let's talk yeah. have your people call my people definitely, you know definitely yeah <laughs> thank you so much for joining us so much, today guys. Safe Bet is now running at Cinemas Nationwide so make sure you support local film and go check this hilarious action comedy out we'll be right back don't go away. Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Bonnie got to spend the last while chatting to a guy from the TV industry and film industry, so I get to chat to the beautiful ladies. So she made her television debut in the UK drama Wild at Hearts, which was shot in South Africa. And then soon after, we got to know her as the ditzy Toomey in the lab on SABC3. Now a seasoned film actress, she shines as the lead in the local drama Sink, which releases in cinemas this week. Joining us in the loft is Shoki Mohapa. Really cool to have you. Thank you so much for having me. So there's so many questions I want to ask you about yeah. your career, but I think I always want to take it back to the beginning. You and I are, are very similar personalities. We're lots of fun. <laughs> we like to, we have big dreams and big things that we want to go do. You see, I just told everyone that I'm fun on yeah. national TV. Uh, let's talk about the beginning stages of your career and sure. uh, your life. So how was growing up for you? Um, it was quite um, sort of strange. It's quite nice that I was almost afforded like a, like a childhood in a sense, mm -hmm. like a went to like a world of school, so we were all kind of like nurtured. It's weird that um, in the background of, of what was going on in the country, in a strange way, we kind of missed out on all of that. Mm. So I, I sort of, it feels like I've just kind of arrived on this planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird because not a lot of kids get that opportunity. Yeah. A lot of kids go through the normal yeah. route and then decide, oh wait, I want to be creative. You yeah. kind of were like, I want to be creative. From the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you yeah. know? Um, I think I just, new i think it's just i mean i was i started off as like a dancer actually like mm. you know, <laughs> on stage and then that was like the natural progression mm. i think growing up it, there were, it was like acting was never like a, a viable thing it wasn't mm. like a career choice it was so a hobby you did that's what yeah, parents still think absolutely and my parents were absolutely horrified because they think that like maybe i should have done something that's more substantial yeah, yeah. than 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 the drama thing yeah and you yeah. decided to make it a full-time thing i mean after yes. your studies at, at, uh, at the sort of creative schools you went yeah. on to go and, and study a tertiary degree yeah. and got your diploma so yeah. talk to us about that so film school is an education in itself <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> it was it wasn't so much the academic stuff but it was like the life I mean, it was like a, a shark tank. It was like a feeding frenzy. So we got some, um, from early on, I kind of got the sense of what the industry kind of would be like. Mm. And it's literally uh, the hustle. Mm. And it's who you know. Totally. And you have to sort of believe in yourself, even if, you know, everyone yeah. else in your mother thinks you can't. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. And you've got involved in a lot of roles, I mean, in that process. I mean, all actors will know that it's just yeah. going from role to role to add to add, just yeah. to try to keep yourself alive as you go. Yeah. Are you finding yourself being able to fund your entire lifestyle just by acting, or are you having to have a job on the side? No, we all have jobs on the side. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> can't afford it. What's yours? You can't What's yours? It. Like, it was just random odd jobs, like, you know, like dressing up as German beer maids. And uh -huh. the <laughs> <laughs> Promotions or ashes. This way 
hey, ma'am, this is where the bathroom's at. And um, yeah, that kind of stuff. Or, or and something you might call of, grunt work, but at the same absolutely. time. Absolutely. And it's the only kind of work that is not like, um, it's like waitressing in a sense, because yeah. it's like shifts so if you're available then you can work, and if you're yeah. not available, then that's fine. But it's but all to fund a much greater passion. It's all to fund Absolutely. the idea that you yeah. know what you want to do, and this yeah. is just to get me there. I mean, it's hard to see, like, a lot of your friends who are more accomplished than you are, yeah. who have got, like, their lives sorted, <laughs> and you're still sort of running around from job to job. So They're also it, coming home crying, so it's okay. I hope so, because it's... <laughs> So, so I'm sticking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Shoki, yeah. obviously, you, you've grown a lot since that time. I mean, you, yeah. you got yourself involved in a couple of really cool projects along the way. Is there a big dream for you? Is there a sort of passion? Is this going towards something? Are you hoping to move to LA? Are you hoping to stay in the country, become the biggest name here? Are soapies your thing? Is stage your thing? Is film your thing? What are you hoping to, to work towards? Sure, that's a good question. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, the, to be on an international platform would be absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to be able just to do films because I find that medium um, just you so truthful life. and mm -hmm. more, more, more amazing and more intimate in a sense. Like, I get, I'm very, like, <laughs> stage, I get stage fright. So, like, stage for me is, is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit scary. So sure. it would be nice to, you know, I'll go where I'm, I'm wanted yeah. and I'll go where I'm needed if that's, if it's over here or there. Then that's I also heard you're a bit of a fighter because <laughs> I know that you're involved in Kung Fu and I find yeah. that fascinating because, I mean, what kind of young woman is involved in Kung Fu in such a deep level? I mean, so how did you get involved? What is your, what is your involvement? It was, it was by accident, which is weird. But um, it was, it's weird that it, it just came at a point in my life where I was like, everything had gone completely wrong. Yeah. And I think that I just wanted a, a part, I wanted to feel like I was in control or, yeah. or powerful or something. And I just sort of happened across this amazing school mm. that changed my entire life. What did it change? And, what did you learn? Well, it's like a Kung Fu, the Shaolin Kung Fu is, um, it's like a, um, it's a philosophy of life. And I think it kind of always challenges you with your pre whatever your ideas of what you think you can and cannot do. Yeah. And each class was about challenging that. Mm -hmm. So you get to a point where I can't do this, I can't do that, and now it's like, you know what, let me see if I can. If I can't do it, then I can philosophize about it. If I can, then, you know. So there's a lot of things that you actually cannot, can't, no, can do. Yeah, that and you just yeah, tell yourself that It's you just like can't. more mental things. So, so Kung Fu is more of a mental thing. Mm. I have such respect for like boxers and like martial, you know, the EFC yes. people, because it's, it's thinking. And it's all up here. It's got yeah. nothing to do with how physically imposing you are and how small or big or short. Shoki, yeah. no disrespect, but yeah. you look like a beautiful girl. And I don't I don't believe you that you can do Kung Fu. Please, won't you show us? No, Please can't. Can we, no, teach me no, something. Teach me some method. It's part of our school ethics. I can't show, you know what I mean? It's, one thing. I'll have to kill just you. Just one thing. One like meditation pose. I would have to kill you. Do you know what this I mean? This just happened on live TV. Okay, so, all right. So you're not going to show me any be moves. That person, I no. want to see a move. <laughs> one thing, one meditation pose. I have to see. There's no meditation pose. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, try it. Maybe you should what teach me. What is this ready? It's that. Okay. That's the ready. Like which I've seen in that Mortal Kombat yeah. thing. Finish him or something. Okay, we'll yeah, just leave it there. Shoki, we're excited to chat to you a little bit later on about Sync. It's okay. so cool to have you in a new Thanks. role. And we're excited to come and support you in our cinemas. Sure. Um, go be great. Yes, please go watch. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we'll talk more about what's happening cool. in the movie a little bit later on. After the break, we also chat to former Seven Dillon actress Amalia Ace. And we're back in the kitchen to put the finishing touches on our Cape Malay trout cooked in a bag. Don't go anywhere. Skip loves your clothes as much as you do. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live on SABC3. Now, we got to know her on Seven Dillon as the charming San Marie Fan Fan. Since then, she's been seen in various local movies like Clan Karua in 2013 and excelled on stage. She's also one of the cast members of the new Afrikaans drama, Sink. Joining us in The Loft is Amalia Ace. Welcome to The Loft, Amalia. Thank Lovely you so to much have for you. having me. Thank you. <laughs> Amalia, you played San Marie for seven years <laughs> on Seven Dillon. That's correct. That's it sounds incredible. like a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you say that that was your threshing floor for, for acting? 
Uh, yes, definitely. Mm. I, I did a small role uh, in, a, in a sitcom uh, also for SABC. I think it was SABC2 called Gabriel. I had about three calls and the character's name was Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually still busy studying then. I was in my third year at varsity. So um, Seven Alarm, Sun Marie was definitely my first big role. Yeah. Are there any big standout takeaway lessons that you still carry with you on other sets from Seven Alarm? I think Seven Alarm was an amazing... Uh, school in terms yeah, of discipline and, and being a professional in the industry. You know, I think um, you, it's, it's a little bit like school where there's actual announcements <laughs> over an intercom and, um, and they, they're very strict with your dialogue handling. Like you oh, have wow. to know the script word by word. Wow. So you have rehearsals uh, prior to your scenes and um, there's someone like cracking the whip saying, no, it wasn't that word, it was that word. And um, But you know what, in, in retrospect, it, it, it's an amazing yeah. uh, platform to, to learn how to be a professional and to be disciplined in this, in this industry. Yes, and you've since then moved on to other mediums like film. And uh, apart from Clan Karoo, you've got two other films that were, you played quite a, a prominent role in, and you've got one releasing this year. Yes. Tell us about that one. Um, I'm very excited about that one. Uh, it's called Cycling Sus Lente. Mm. And uh, it's a, it's a, a rom-com, but a rom-com with a bit of a twist. Um, it's not your, your normal romantic comedy. And um, there's going to be amazing talent in it as well. Uh, beautiful music. It kind of revolves around, around music because... Um, in a nutshell, it's about a guy who meets his uh, boss's daughter and he falls in love with her and he's actually a mechanic, but he tells her that he's in a, in a band to ah. sound cooler and... Um, yeah. and more <laughs> eligible. Exactly. <laughs> and um, then obviously the story unravels and she finds out that he lied to her. And, but it's, it's going to be a, lo yeah. a lot of fun yeah. and it was a, an awesome production to be a part yeah. of. And you were also obviously a part of Sync, which we're going to chat about a little bit later with Shorky. Yeah. But you're also a producer. You're juggling both the, behind the <laughs> scenes and the, in front of the screen. What's that like? How do you just manage it all? Sure. Um, the, the production thing started early this year. Um, I was approached by, by a production company that I've worked with um, in previous, on previous films, and um, they've given me this, this opportunity to, to produce a film for them, um, help produce it, yeah. be the line producer. So wow. it's completely behind the scenes. You organize all the logistics for the film. It's not glamorous at all. Yeah. You can basically you go <laughs> into the office not wearing any makeup and just yeah. sit there you and, 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 your and you have to do your work. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a massive amount of responsibility. Yeah. But, but yeah. I'm so excited about this film. I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be um, completely new in Afrikaans as well. So wow. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, again, uh, an amazing learning curve yeah. in my life. Yeah. Yeah. You've also recently moved to Cape Town from Joburg. What yes. was that move like? It's um, and how does it color your work? And what are the differences industry-wise in terms of Johannesburg and Cape Town? It's you know the transition has been quite smooth yeah. because I was I was stressing a little bit about because I'm a freelance actress I wasn't sure you know what am I moving on to now? What's the next job going to be after Cycling to Slenta? Um, and I got this phone call and, and, and my entire life changed in one afternoon. You know, I went from being an actress who have to go to who has to go to castings to yeah. someone who has a job. Yes. <laughs> and that's a massive relief. Big adjustment. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so um, I'm just I'm just relieved and, and grateful for the opportunity. And then, you know, the move in itself is it's been quite a smooth transition as well because I studied in Stellenbosch. And um, we're living in Stellenbosch at the moment. Um, it's a temporary thing. We're planning to move to Cape Town. But um, it's amazing. I studied there and it feels like home. It feels oh, like wow. I'm one of the students again. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible <laughs> to go back and make a film there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's lovely. Wow. And you're someone who's not afraid to be seen with the person that you're dating in the media. And <laughs> what's it like dating in the industry? Is there a lot of pressure versus dating somebody who's not in the industry? Who? Um... You know, I think I think it's it's not that that you choose to be seen with someone. It's just that it's such an important part of every individual's life that yeah. it's kind of like you don't want to hide it. You don't want to yeah. to, yeah. to sweep it's too it under much the rug work and to hide it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I am I am trying my very best to be to be very private about my personal life, but I would say it it, it depends on on the person, the the personality type. Like yes. I think for some artists, uh, being a a, 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 
like both parties being an artist, it works for them. And sometimes it's like oil and fire and it's yes, just, you know, completely indeed, indeed. tumultuous and all over the place. So for me personally, I, I prefer having someone who, who grounds me and mm. who's mm. there to support me and, and, and to understand what the industry is about and to also appreciate art and what I'm doing. But when I go home, I can leave everything at the front door and we can have a, a normal life. That's awesome, important to awesome. me, yeah. Well, we're cooking something in the kitchen and we're going to chat about sink while we eat. So let's see how Danilo is coming along with it. Oh, and I have to do it. One thing that can't sink is a fish, right? Because it swims and then that's what it does. So today we're cooking with trout in the kitchen. We've got uh, Ryan Smith with us. He owns a restaurant called Ryan's Kitchen in Franschhoek. And today, instead of using mussels because of the red tide, we've decided to use a trout. And it is so delicious. I can smell mm. all these flavors in the kitchen. Uh -huh. I don't know how Bonnie and them are focusing that side of the world. But no, it's fantastic. We finish off the broth here, uh -huh. basically. Okay, so this is one we made a bit earlier because you generally want to make this a day or two in advance, definitely. Um, this has only been made a, few, a couple hours in advance and already you can get the big <laughs> nose from it. Small. So, so we're going to generally finish it off now uh, with, a, with a bit of mm -hmm. apricot jam uh, just to get the sweetness. When this is something more try and, trial and error, you'd put in how much you like or don't like or maybe you want to add some yes. more vinegar, etc. Everyone uh, in our loft is very sweet, so enough uh, is enough. Okay. Yeah, enough is enough. So we're ready to go. So at this stage you want to have your bag ready as such. Okay. Uh, really straightforward. We made a really simple one for everyone to see. So basically two, two pieces of uh, greasy paper, a thicker one, uh, with a piece of foil in between, and just staple the edges. You take the bowl that you want to use to serve in afterwards, oh, and just sort of shape it as that. Shape it down like that. So we're basically showing you guys how to cook this in the oven a little bit later on yeah. on the show. So if you're wondering what the heck we're doing here, mm -hmm. basically creating a nice little cooking bag right. for the stuff to cook in. You can serve it like that too, and it looks so cool. It's mm. innovative too. No, it's great. So we've got the, you basically line the bowl with your bag like that. Uh, okay. On the bottom we've got some, cooked potatoes already, we just sliced up. Uh, we just want to put some you in the bottom. You just boiled those and skinned them. Yeah, we just boiled them and peeled them and sliced them up. You can use baby potatoes as well. Uh, we just use some potatoes and some tomatoes. You can go wild, spring onions, leeks, whatever you like. We've got oh. a really nice big piece of fish here. Put some tomatoes in there first. Yeah, we're just gonna, well, we'll put that on top of the, oh, okay. on the top. So we just want to put a touch of seasoning on top, on top of your fish here. Oh, and you've left uh, the skin on, right? Yeah, we left the skin on this one. You don't have to, we have. You can take it off if you want. It'll just cook a lot quicker if you take it off. So we've got that like that. On top, we can put a few of your tomatoes now. Cool. Oh, how many? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's more than enough. That's probably a bit too much. Take too take many out. Okay. There we go. So we just got some tomatoes inside there. And now we want to put some fresh herbs inside. You can even use some of the curry leaves that you had before. Oh, or we see. can use, so we've also got some basil and some coriander here. And you're going to get this fantastic Yum. aroma once you open the bag. Because the trout has got quite a smoky sort of flavor to uh -huh. it already. So there's nice fresh coriander. No, definitely. And basil this is very summery. This is, I would say this is very summery. Um, you, yeah, like I said, if, if you go into your ordinary period, leeks, you can probably put more leeks, potatoes, and all root vegetables inside if you wanted to do it as such. Okay. Uh, and we're good to go now. So we've got the, we've got the bouillon. Uh, it doesn't have to be hot. I think for us, with the trout, it would be better yes. with hot. Uh, obviously, trout is not like king clip or, or mussels. It will cook in five minutes. Okay, you, know, cool. you still want to have the trout a little bit pink. So, so in that regard, we've used the liquid a bit hot. So we're just going to put a... I think we'll... Put a ladle in a half. Maybe bit, a little yeah. ladle and a half. Uh, probably let's okay. call it a ladle, ladle and a half. And we just coat it, and it smells fantastic oh, already, so doesn't delicious. it? <laughs> it really looks so good. And so we're just going to carefully, basically, pull up the edges now, as such. And you're just going to close it as a little sort of parcel as such. Oh, my and word. And you just seal it up like that. And I think this in the oven, five minutes, and that'll be about right, you know? Oh, so we're just going to... And that's it, you know? It's going to go, go in like that. Obviously, when it comes out, it goes to the table to your guests like mm. that. It sits down, and the guest opens up and gets this wonderful surprise. Awesome. And it becomes almost a, at home, I suppose. You can become a, a one-bag meal yes. per person. So. And if you guys have obviously just tuned into the show, we've mm -hmm. basically showed you how to make a really cool bag to cook your trout inside. Mm -hmm. All you need is two pieces of a sort of baking paper, yeah. nice thick ones. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of that, you put yourself a piece of tin foil. Tin foil staple yeah. them all together, and you place it in a nice bowl. You put all your ingredients inside. You fold it up together quite nicely. Mm -hmm. This goes in the oven at what temperature? Uh, 200. We normally cook it. 200, okay. uh, 180 to 200, depending on your oven. For five you know, minutes five, or so. A trout is five minutes, obviously mussels or something else. It's, you, it gives you, it buys you a lot more time. You yeah. can put it in for five, 10, 15 minutes. It'll Fantastic. be, be all right. But cool. trout, I think five minutes should be fine. And all the other recipes and the ingredients, etc., on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. You can play around with it, have some fun with this new method you've learned and wow all of your friends. Uh, and that's courtesy right here of Afternoon Express and our chef in the kitchen, Ryan. It's really cool to have you with us on the show today. We're going to go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we're chatting about Sync the movie. Don't go anywhere. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Unlock 
SVM Collection. Welcome back. Lovely to have you back with us on Afternoon Express. Now, based on the novel by writer and director Brett Michael Innes called Rachel Weeping, Sink tells the story of Rachel, a Mozambican domestic worker living in Johannesburg, who's forced to make a life-changing decision after her daughter dies under the care of her South African employer. Following its multiple awards at the Silver Gaspiers... Silver Scadamphiers. Yes. Gaspiers Christmas. No, Silver Scadamphiers <laughs> last year. Sink has been named as one of the first films officially selected for this year's Atlanta Film Festival. We're back on the couch with Shoki Mahapa and Amalia. This is slightly well, less, and less comfortable table. couch yeah, that we've got with <laughs> it's us. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we've had a chat about your guys' individual careers, obviously, but Sync is such, a, is such an incredible platform. You guys get to come together. Yes. This is your first like major lead. Yes, I can a Talk to us about film. it. Mm. It was... It was epic. <laughs> I think I only... I started freaking out after the film, so... I'm only sort of now getting into like the, how big it actually is the moment wow, was. Wow. So whilst yeah. shooting it wasn't like, I was like, okay, cool, just going to yeah. work. You know, being a, a lead in a film, yeah. uh, you know, is not just about being the prominent one. It's yeah. actually about carrying the story. The story. Yeah. Yeah. What does that pressure feel like just before you start filming? Is it nerve wracking? Well, it's the most bizarre thing. Like I think me and, and, and Jacques had this, this experience this reaction afterwards, like while we were in it, it was fine. I didn't really think about it much. And then afterwards, you're just like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> and oh my gosh, everyone's coming to watch me and <gasps> it's having that whole fit yeah. and stuff, but it's all done. It's like, you know, we've it's all over. shot and it's over. Yeah. And I was like, my yeah. life is over, my career is, you know, I had that massive, like I had to, people had to calm me down and, wow. you know, I was finished. I was like, this is my, I'm done. I'm going to become an accountant. I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the actual, we've had a kind of snippet of the, of the plot line, but what is yeah. the, the full plot line of this film? What, what story is it trying to tell here? That's a big question. Um, yeah, I think I must focus on the themes there that, yeah. um, that, that that's prominent in Sync is that um, it's it's about three three main uh, individuals: uh, Shoki's character, Anel Alexander's character, and uh, uh, Jacques Bessinger, yeah. who plays Chris. Yeah. And they uh, three characters come from vastly different backgrounds, and all three of them need to deal with certain yeah. things like um, loss and, and dealing with guilt and then eventually forgiveness um, mm -hmm. and how these three people deal with, with that situation. Yeah. And I think it's a lovely, uh, a lovely message that's portrayed at the end because it's like that, that saying, be kind because Indeed, everyone yeah. you meet is fighting yeah. a battle. Absolutely. You know, I think yeah. They, yeah. they learn to, to forgive one another for, for the choices that they've made and sure. for what's happened. And... Um, to yeah. fight that battle together. Yeah. yeah. It kind of explores our sort of common humanity as people. Yeah. And so and sometimes we're just faced with situations where it's like no one is to blame. Mm. So we were very careful with that form. Mm. I don't want anyone leaving feeling like they were victimized or, or, or we were traumatic, pointing. Yeah. Because it's just life happens, right? So, yeah. so it's just how we deal with things. And then um, it kind of life reduces us to, to human beings. So it really is about, you know, how well do you know the people that you work with? Yeah. Or how, and it, and it comes down to like even the waiter yeah. or the guy at the petrol station, you know, just to like, hi, how are you? Like, yeah. you know, they they have lives as well. Yeah. So I think what it also touches on is that um, dignity, you know, isn't it? Isn't absolutely. It yeah, we all the same. We all want to, you know, send our children to school and mm. put food on the yeah. table, yeah. and we all want the same things as mm. people. And I, I feel like some we've kind of forgotten about yeah. that it doesn't along matter the way. Where you come from or yeah. Where you are. Yeah. yeah. And everybody's dreams yeah. and needs are legitimate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. incredible. What about the actual local scene at the moment? I mean, we we get to see the film itself for the final product. Uh, how is our local production scene? Give us some behind the scenes looks as to, I mean, expenses, budgets, that kind of stuff, and the production crews. Are they talent? Are, are we growing? Are, oh, we, wow. are we building? No, no, that's I want to know the business side. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Drive slow, drive slow. No, because slow. This is your, you, you've been in the industry for so long and you know so yeah. much about crews. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm hoping that, like, it's kind of changing. So, mm. we, so we're, we're starting to make more meaningful kind yeah. of work and stuff. Yeah. So I don't more know what contemporary as well. Yeah, and just mm. things that is a bit more like relevant to what's happening. I think there's been a big shift to that, and yeah. I think there's been a shift from we kind of want to um, explore different kinds of not say like realities, but something that's not Genres like yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so, people are ready to see to see the stories that we need to tell. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like slapstick, sl slapstick, slapstick yeah. comedy and, <laughs> and romantic and all of that. comedies have yeah. their place in the yeah. industry. But but we are ready as South Africans to tell intelligent stories yeah. that, yeah. that, that so can exciting. play uh, poignant messages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that just aren't, you know and raise we, questions so we yeah. can have conversations mm. like this. About and we yeah. can yeah. compete with an international market. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. We can. Yeah. So when can we see the film and where? It's coming out on the 18th 18? of March. Oh. On my birthday. On my birthday. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Please. That's awesome. 18th of March, which uh -huh. is the yeah, Friday. Well, I can tell you what's coming out on the 14th of March. What? It's your fish, because you guys are just oh. leaving it there hanging, and I just feel like it's being rejected there. So please okay. open up your little packages. Open it up. I've nice. also got some dessert for you guys. So I've got some dessert on lineup. Um, I want to go take a trip across here because I've got some flavors. Oh my God. Are you all big Magnum fans? We, yes. yes. Okay, so you, you kind of got to tell me which flavor you want because I've got the dark uh, death by chocolate I've got for you. I've got almond. I've got white almond for you. Which one do you like? Also dark chocolate and mint. Almond. Almond. <laughs> cool. <laughs> mm. Amalia? I'll go with the death by chocolate. Death by chocolate. Good choice. Sounds very dramatic. Bon? Yes, my wow, this is death kind Death by of... chocolate. Sure. And I'll do the white almond. Yummy. Cool. Wow. Let's wow. get these to it the is. table. This it smells is. absolutely amazing. Sure. Wow. There you go, mm, ladies. Mm, Thanks, Oh, there we go. Mm. Thank you. Ah, delicious. Can I have my, I'm going to go for dessert first. Can I steal my dessert oh, first? Nice yeah. 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 <laughs> so you guys might be remember a few weeks ago, uh, we featured this brand new Aussie Circus on Afternoon Express. Well, tomorrow on Expresso Morning Show, presenter Zoe Brown pays them a visit to test out their most dangerous stunts herself. She's the first civilian to ever try it, and it was all captured on camera. So make sure you guys catch Expresso tomorrow morning from 6 to 8.30. Uh, and we did have a clip for it, but you guys saw it there a little bit on Afternoon Express. Express today. Don't forget to catch the show tomorrow on Afternoon Express. See you same time, Quest same place. Quest is on tomorrow. Tune Epic. In. Yay. Good night. Happy <laughs> eating. Bye. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, hip-hop singer and winner of the 2016 Metro FM Best Female Album Award, Fifi Cooper joins us for a live performance and we observe National Water Week. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.